Well, hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. Today I'll be listening to one of Ren's newest songs called McKay. Now this song, from what I understand, is dedicated to a friend of his who passed away years ago. In the description of his music video, Ren talks about his struggle with finding the right words to honor his friend. His friend's name was Callum McKay. And Callum apparently tragically passed away shortly after another close friend of Ren's named Joe passed away. So Ren talks about how difficult it was to process both of those uh, deaths in such a short period of time. And he admitted that he really hadn't been able to fully grieve them in the past. He had wanted for a long time to dedicate a song to his friend Callum, but he just couldn't find the right words. But one day in the recent past, he sat down at his piano and was inspired to create this melody for his friend Callum. And this allowed him to express emotions that words just couldn't capture. And he specifically said that in the description of this video, which I thought was such a great reminder of the power of music in times when we experience such intense emotions that may be difficult to face. Sometimes when words fail us, music becomes our voice. Music allows us to process complex emotions and experiences that at times we can struggle to articulate verbally. So without further ado, let's take a listen to Ren's new song, McKay. I'm speechless. I am just struck by how powerful this song is, especially considering it's purely instrumental, not using any words. This song proves the point that Ren made in the description of his video that sometimes words just aren't enough to convey the breadth of emotions, the, the depth of emotions that we feel when we lose someone that's close to us. And on top of that, I think What's remarkable about this song is how Ren uses the different tones and melodies to take us on a journey that is very similar to the grieving process. We have these periods in the piece that convey sorrow, sadness, intense sadness, maybe regret, but then there are other parts of the song that convey redemption, peace, acceptance. So we kind of go through this grieving process journey with Ren, and I think it's very beautiful. The complexity of emotions that Ren conveys through this song about his friend, it's just a wonderful reminder that despite someone that we love, who, who we've lost, maybe gone in the physical sense, we are still so deeply connected to them, and that connection transcends space, time it's it's a connection that will never be lost
acceptance part of the piece. Ooh, that was a beautiful piece. I'm so happy you guys recommended it to me. Death is one of those universal aspects of life. Everybody will experience it at one point or another. We all have an expiration date. And so many of us fear it so much. Understandably so, because it's the ultimate unknown. And it's also one of the aspects of life that we have the least control over. All this talk of death reminds me of a recent video that I watched by one of my favorite, favorite doctors on YouTube. His name is Z-Dog MD. Oh, his real name is Dr. Zubin Damanya. I absolutely love his authenticity and you could totally tell that he has no agenda. He has no ulterior motives on YouTube. Uh, he just really wants to make people's lives better and he focuses on meditation, uh, and I've, I've just really appreciated his videos. Anyways, he recently shared his experience of his, his dad recently dying. His dad was 84 years old, and in that video, he talked about how graceful of a death and peaceful of a death his dad had. One of the main reasons why his dad died so peacefully and with dignity was because he and Zubin had many open conversations about death and what his dad would have wanted at that time when it looked like he was gonna pass. They had these open conversations for years and his father expressed his wishes to pass peacefully without any aggressive medical interventions and Zubin respected that decision. And Zubin in this video talked about how avoiding all of, avoiding these important conversations about death can actually lead to futile interventions and aggressive, unnecessarily aggressive interventions in the hospital, which can prolong suffering. And while fighting for life is necessary at times, often, right, there comes a point where death is inevitable. And persistently struggling against it, battling against it, only adds to the suffering to you, to the dying person, and to the loved ones around them. And in Western culture, we just, we really struggle to accept death as a natural part of life. And it leaves us avoiding important conversations and then unprepared when the time comes. And I've seen this so often in the hospital where someone's death is just prolonged unnecessarily and there's so much suffering, unnecessary suffering. And it just, uh, I don't know, it just like breaks my heart. Moving on to one silver lining about death is that regularly thinking about it and contemplating your own mortality can really lead to a profound appreciation for the present. Embracing the uncertainty of your life, the uncertainty of tomorrow can allow us to really appreciate the beauty of the life in the here, of life in the here and now. So I think that's one of the things that I've really tried to take away. I did want to mention one intriguing aspect of Zubin's experience with his father, and that was how it unfolded. So his, his father was hospitalized early in the day, and Zubin, being far away, he couldn't physically visit his dad in the hospital. But Zubin had this intuitive sense that his father's passing was imminent. So upon learning of his father's hospitalization, Zubin retreated into his meditation room and he spent several hours in deep meditation and he visualized himself by his father's bedside in the hospital. Then around 5 p.m. he felt this overwhelming profound sense of peace and release and intuitively he sensed that his father had died at that moment. And just 15 minutes later he received a phone call from his mom confirming that his dad had died. There's no rational scientific explanation for how Zubin was able to feel his father passing during his meditation session. But to me, it strongly suggests this connection that this conscious connection that transcends physical space and time. I've had similar experiences in which I sensed, like strongly sensed the presence of a deceased loved one after their passing. For instance, my father passed several years ago. And from time to time, I just 
I strongly feel his presence. I feel it and it's indescribable. And also I have extremely vi vivid, sorry, I'm getting kind of emotional right now, but I have vivid dreams of my grandmother in my dreams and they're such detailed dreams and they hold such deep symbolic meaning for me every time she comes. Like it's not just a, you know, like there's so much meaning to those dreams. And although I can't scientifically prove that my grandmother was present with me in my dream or that my father is present with me when I feel him, the sensation is so powerful that it really, like it brings me to tears when I think about it. So this made me think of one last thought that I wanted to share before I end this incredibly long video. But I recently stumbled across this fascinating article talking about the brain's activity during the dying process. And it talked about this new study that was conducted by a researcher who measured the brainwaves of a dying woman using an electroencephalogram or an EEG. This is a brainwave study that I use all the time in my practice where uh, scalp electrodes are placed on a person's head and then it measures the brainwaves of the person who's getting the test. So contrary to conventional thoughts in medicine that the brain activity decreases significantly during death because of the lack of oxygenation to the blood, to the, to the brain, this study revealed the opposite. It showed strong high frequency signals and highly synchronized activity, particularly in the regions associated with empathy in that dying patient's brain. So normally, conventional medical thought is that as someone's dying, their heart slowly stops beating or quickly stops beating. Their brain stops getting oxygenated blood. So brain activity significantly drops and also gets a lot more disorganized. Well, this study found the exact opposite. It found that this patient, dying patient's brain waves were highly synchronous, especially in the regions associated with empathy, and they were emitting extremely fast frequencies in the gamma range. So the author of the study proposed that due to this complicated nature of the brain signals that she saw in this dying patient's brain, that the patient may have been experiencing what is called a near-death experience. Of course, we can't confirm that the patient had any experiences, including an NDE or a near-death experience, because the patient ended up dying. But it does bring up some interesting questions. For those of you who are unfamiliar with NDEs or near-death experiences, they are basically experiences of individuals who have died and then been revived and they come back to tell us what they experience. So these experiences often include encounters with bright lights, deceased family members, uh, or encounters with spiritual beings, life reviews in which they, in a very short period of time, review all of their life's experiences and decisions. Uh, they NDEs can also include out-of-body sensations and experiences. The fact that so many people in this world have pretty similar NDEs, also with this evidence of this intensely fast and synchronized activity in this patient's dying brain in this study, it makes me wonder about the nature of consciousness and its potential to transcend physical limitations. Could those fast frequency activities recorded from that dying patient's brain literally be consciousness leaving the physical body? Could consciousness itself be a quantum entity that transcends space, that transcends material, physical space and time? I don't know. It's just, I mean, it's just incredible. So circling back to the song, as always, Ren does not fail to amaze me. He is incredibly talented and his songs inspire me so much. And to anyone who has lost a loved one, my heart goes out to you and I hope that you can find peace and grace as you navigate this potentially difficult journey. Just embrace your feelings, allow yourself to grieve, go through it, don't try to avoid it. And if music can help you get through it and feel the feelings that you need to feel to go fully through the grieving process, do that. Love to all of you and we'll catch you next time. Bye.